What are you saying, lads? Welcome back to the We Love You Arsenal YouTube channel. I literally cannot see anything. Welcome back to the We Love You Arsenal YouTube channel, the home of high quality content for Arsenal on YouTube from now. If you do enjoy sort of tactical insight videos, sorts, that sort of thing, then please subscribe to the channel. That is the sort of content we're going to be bringing. Uh, you know, hit the subscribe button. You can find us on Twitter at WLYA blog and on Instagram at we love you we.love.u.arsenal and me on Twitter at Alfie Colshaw. In this video, we're just going to be discussing what Arteta could do to sort of turn this dire situation around. It's been a pretty horrendous start to the season. Uh, I know what you're all saying. Oh, we should get rid of him. And I hear you. I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But I think it's not going to happen, is it? So I think we need to sort of compartmentalize the fact it's not going to happen and you know what's what could he do to turn try and turn it around what will he do what will he try and do we're going to look into the tactics we're going to look into the structure of the team all that stuff with rob worthington the deputy editor of we love you arsenal in a minute but first i'm just going to look at the personnel and the, you know he's, he's he's been unlucky with injuries and stuff um suspensions uh well not really suspensions now shaka's out and you know the covid outbreak so he's he's, he's had players missing who are, who are vital but after this international break he doesn't really have that excuse because everyone should be back pretty much um so we're going to look at the personnel the sort of team i think he'll begin to mold us into this is the team that I think Arteta will go with. I think it's the sort of maybe a few few choices in there where you're like, well, maybe not quite yet, you know, the likes of Ramsdale, Lukonga. But I think this is the team I think he'll slowly try and mould us into this season. And it is at that point where, you know, without European football, he needs to try and settle on, you know, more consistent 11. There's a lot of rotation and I don't think that's helping the chemistry, the cohesion of the team. The more settled a lineup he gets, the better sort of tactically we will be because you'll be able to work on that system with those players and yeah I think this is the team I think this you look at this team the, the Man City team the team that started against Man City there were seven players who were still there and uh, when Wenger left so I think when you look at this team this is more of his team in goal I think Ramsdale over Leno I think that is going to be something we might start seeing I think Ramsdale obviously we signed him for a very big price tag at 24 million so You'd expect him to slowly come in over Leno. Um, there's rumours that he may even start on the weekend against Norwich. Um, and I just think we've seen the problems with Leno with his distribution. And I think, although I think Leno might be a better shot stopper at the moment, if you look at the post shot XG minus goals allowed stats from the last few seasons, um, Leno's a better shot stopper. That's the, the metric for shot stopping. But I think. It's difficult for us to know if Ramsdale is good with his feet at the moment because I think at Sheffield United, if you look at his stats, it was all very much long balls. Um, they didn't really play out from the back of that Sheffield United team. So it's hard to know whether Ramsdale is capable of doing that. But from the early signs against West Brom anyway, he, he did look you know comfortable with his feet and playing it around the back, uh, playing those little balls into midfield. And I think that is why Arteta will slowly but surely ease him in. And I mean, maybe, maybe it will be pretty rapid and you know this weekend against Norwich who knows but I think that is going to be something we're seeing as time goes on at right back Tommy Yasu is obviously going to come in he's been brought into play a set very specific role which we'll get into when we get into the sort of tactical stuff with Rob but yeah I, I expect him to start a right back week in week out you know we've just signed him and that has been a problem area Chambers clearly showing these few games he's it, there's too many limitations in his game to play there on a consistent basis Maitland Niles who knows what's happening with him? He's obviously stayed at the club. Um, whether or not he'll get a role there or he'll be used as a utility man, maybe more in midfield, we never know. And Cedric, I mean, I don't want to talk about Cedric, to be honest. At centre-back, I think we all know it's going to be White and Gabriel went once they're fit. Um, White obviously coming back from COVID. Gabriel coming back from his injury. On the ball, I think White, we all know his qualities and I think that's partly why we bought him for £50 million. You know, he's much better much better than holding in that aspect gabriel we saw defensively he's a lot a lot more able to deal with you know mobile attackers than pablo marie who's really struggled in the early weeks obviously tierney will be at left back we all know that um his outlook on the left hand side providing you know width on that left hand side crossing ability cutback ability creativity from that side created more chances than any other arsenal player last season in midfield obviously shaka and Partey is the senior partnership i think we've just seen too much from Shakara. I think we're at the point where we know what he is and he's not going to change. And I think if we want to evolve as a team, I think Lukonga 
He's shown in the early weeks a bit of a parte regen in you know the way he progresses the ball and the way he profiles statistically. Obviously, I think he could improve defensively, but yeah, I think we'll slowly see parte kind of like Lakonga, kind of like Ramsdale coming on in for Leno. I think we'll slowly see more of Lakonga over Shaka as the season progresses. I think that parte Lakonga partnership will be ever present. Further forward, and this is where it gets very interesting. I think it's going to be that three behind Albamian. I think the best way to get Albama Yang firing is to play three technical creative players in behind him who can do all the build up play because we all know Albama Yang's limitations in possession. You know, he's not someone who gets involved heavily, doesn't have many touches, but you want him to be in the box and getting on the end of things. And I think the best way to do that is to play our three most creative players in behind him in Smith Rowe, Saka, and Odegaard. You know, Martinelli and Pepe, Pepe, very talented players who have their strengths, but they're more, more goal threats than creative players. I mean, those three creators in behind him in Odegaard, Saka and Smith-Rowe with Aubameyang up top. So on to the tactics and the structure of the team. I brought in uh, Mr. Rob Worthington himself. We love you, Arsenal. Deputy editor of the site. He actually, Rob actually wrote a piece about this, um, about how Arteta could turn things around this week for the site. So thought bring him in, you know, discuss a few tactical elements and, you know, how he thinks Arteta will set up and try and turn this around. But a key element of this piece was obviously the structure you think he'll play in possession. It's a structure we've seen, you know, that, you know, when at the end of last season, second half of last season, which we played pretty well and, you know, worked going forward in possession. Um, yeah, do you want to just like explain that? Yeah, of course. Um, so Arsenal pretty much set up in a, anything between a 2-3-5 and a, and a 3-2-5 when we, when we have the ball. Um, and yeah, that, that's what that piece was sort of centred upon. We have Kieran Tierney bombing on up the left. He basically plays left wing. And then we sort of have Smith Rowe and Erdegaard in, in, the, in the half spaces. So the, the area is just inside the wingers. Uh, so they're, they're basically both mm. players number 10s. You know, we always say, oh, let's move Smith Rowe out to the left. But... They're just playing left side and right side number 10, really. Um, and then on the right wing, usually Bakayo Saka or, or Nicolas Pepe, both of them can, can perform in that role. And that, that's a good thing because, you know, we, we do actually have quite good interchangeability in those areas um, mm. other than perhaps with the number 10s. But, you know, Saka can come inside and play that role that Erdegaard plays. Or Saka can also play, yeah, Saka could play the left-sided um he did against West Brom, and then you could bring um, Pepe on the out on the right, and maybe rest at Smith Rowe. There's a lot of options. Yeah, there's there's plenty of options, uh, and then in defence, as I say, uh, it's either a three-two or a two-three, and uh, we'll get into the signing of uh, Tommy Asu and and how that's really going to help us because he's a player who is sort of well suited to that inverted role on the right hand side. He doesn't bomb forward; he sort of acts as a make weight for Kieran Tierney, who. Obviously, on the other side, is just going to fly forward. He's going to join in that midfield, um, hopefully progress the ball really well towards that, that front five that I've just been talking about. And yeah, that, that's the plan. And then in defence, we play more of like a 4-4-2. Uh, so we have Aubameyang and... Out of possession. Uh, yeah, out of possession. Um, we've got Aubameyang and Odegaard sort of leading that press and their task is to... Um, sort of close off the passing lanes and then those in behind them then pounce. Uh, I think I remember the game against Olympiacos actually away. We saw that work really well. We had Erdegaard pressing really high and then um, Saka's just sort of in behind to collect the ball. Uh, and the same on same on the left-hand side with the Bamian doing the pressuring. And then you've got Smith Rowe in behind him at left midfield. And then you've also got the central midfielders who tend to push up really high as well in Granit Xhaka and Thomas Partey or Lukonga if, if we choose to play him. So yeah, it's quite it's a really interesting system and I imagine that it, it will actually bear some fruit for us when we've got our full selection of players available to us again. And you mentioned that press. Mm. One thing I've been sort of most critical about Arteta's approach mm. and I think one area of his coaching where I think we haven't really seen anything from is his ability to coach a cohesive press. You know, a press mm. isn't just players charging down. It needs cohesive coaching to yeah, sort of yeah. create a system of how you press. And I think if you look at the stats, we 
what, something like 19th for total pressures last season. We don't press yeah. enough and we, he clearly has struggled to sort of implement that press. One thing we have seen tactically this season so far, and there's clearly an emphasis on, and it's probably cost us defensively a bit. We've lost a bit, a bit of the defensive security we had at times last season is the, you know, the attempt to play more of a high line. We've been much more front-footed, mm, yeah. much more aggressive in that high line. You see it in the average positions. I'll probably get some stat, some average position map things up <laughs> um, if I can be bothered in the edit. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's that's definitely an element where I think Arteta hasn't done enough. And I think, you know, what, what do you expect him... Do, do you expect to see more of a press in the next few games? And do you think that's realistic considering we haven't really seen a pressing system so far? Um, because I think tactically there is obviously the high line. And th- when you play a high mm. line with no ball pressure, that is a recipe for disaster. And I think, yeah, do you, how do you think he'll sort of try and turn that around? Do you think he will be able to? Well, as as you said, we have very little evidence to suggest he he can turn it around in that regard. Hopefully, we'll have Ben White. Well, we will have Ben White available. Hopefully, Gabriel as well, and that will really improve things in that regard. Also, Thomas Partey in that midfield. You know, these are the players that we need to be able to perform a, an effective press and a high line. Um, and as you say. They sort of go hand in hand, pressing in a high line. You know, it's all about winning the ball back as high up the pitch as possible, so you can then be effective on the transition. As I said in the piece, it still needs a lot of work. Um, we might not really see it be, you know, as effective as as effective as we would like it to be until I don't know a few few weeks into the season, uh, which is frustrating because you know we really need to start picking up these results, but. I hope that he can, but you know I'm not going to say he will because, as you say, he he has not shown us any evidence to suggest that he is a manager who's who's capable of um, setting up his team with a cohesive pressing system. It's just you know we haven't seen it yet. And um, I want to get on to Tommy Yasu quickly. Obviously, we're all excited about our new signing. For me, this feels like the most specific piece of recruitment we've done since Arteta come, has come in you know there's been a lot of talk about our, our dealings this summer how they're you know future proofed you know um if if Arteta isn't here it may be even like a couple months or whatever um these players he's brought in because they're young and they could be molded into um whatever a new coach wants them to do yeah it seems like he's just a very good one-on-one defender he's he's someone who's very good at passing from mm. deep areas no ball progression numbers are pretty good He's not someone who gets into the final third ever. Like he will not contribute in that aspect. And that's what I'm saying. This is very much an Arteta pepism, you know, this sort of inverted fullback. So it, it's definitely a piece of recruitment that will help Arteta. And he doesn't really have an excuse to that right back issue uh, position. Now he's got a player who will play the role he wants in his system. But mm. do you think this is perhaps based purely on Arteta's system? And do you think that could potentially hinder a future manager coming in, not having the right back he wants? And also, what what do you expect from Tomiyasu in this system? Yeah, so I, I pretty much expect everything that you, you've just outlined. I expect him to sit nice and deep, uh, contribute to progressing the ball forward uh, in terms of when we had the ball. Uh, tucking in and being a nice physical presence alongside Ben White, which is really good because he's not the best area lead, Ben White, uh, but he makes up for that with a lot of other areas of his game. As for uh, your question surrounding a, 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 what a new manager would think of him, luckily, as as we've already said, he's very versatile. So if a new manager comes in and he's like, okay, this guy just isn't what I want from a right back, it's fine. He can slot in at centre back. Uh, he can play the right side of a three. Uh, you know, I think it's unlikely that we get Conte, but if we did, um, you know, he could play as a right centre back for Conte and then uh, have White and and uh, Gabriel alongside him. So yeah, I, I I think as you say, it's a very Arteta specific signing. Uh, but then again, uh, the inverted right back is seen a lot these days in modern football. Um, so you never know the next manager we could we bring in could want. A similar sort of style of right back. Um, so yeah, I think it is another future proof signing. Uh, 22 years old, seems like a really hard worker. Um, 
And yeah, I, as, I, as I said to you, like, uh, I think I mentioned this too on Twitter, I just think he seems like a really good egg uh, and that, that's really positive to have that sort of presence in, in the dressing room. Thank you very much to Rob for that uh, brilliant insight into the structure of the team and how he thinks Arteta will attempt to turn it around. That is, that is our take. Let us know what you think below. And yeah, you can probably tell we're sort of new to doing these videos, um, but we're going to try our best, you know. And hopefully provide some some good Arsenal video content. And yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And yeah, if you do, subscribe, share it, and you know, do all that. And yeah, as I said at the start, follow us on Twitter at WLYA blog and on Instagram at we love we.love.u.arsenal will all be in the description. And you can follow Rob on Twitter at AFC Blogger49 and myself, Alfie Colshaw. And yeah, cheers and see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,